Hello, farmers, and welcome to another episode of The Harvest Season. My name is Cody, and I am here today to talk about Cottagecore Games. Woo! Uh, I am just doing a solo episode today. We had um, a scheduling issue and w- like frantically tried to get a news episode together, and I was the only person available, which I'm totally fine with. Al has done this before. Al has done solo episodes before. He said it's like hard or something. I don't know. So we're going to find out if it is. Uh, t- check back in here. I'm actually going to add it to the show notes right now. Um, check back in is solo podcasting hard. Uh, I, th- I think it's going to be hard, <laughs> but uh, I'm just going to imagine listening to everyone responding to this, um, and so that is going to be great, and honestly, if y'all enjoy it, I wouldn't say no to doing this again if absolutely needed. So today is just going to be a news podcast, but because people have been clamoring for insect facts in um, the Slack and just in general in my life, people are just really into insects. Um, In between each news item, I'm going to dive into a fact about an order of insects. So Insecta is a clade, and inside of that clade, there are many orders. I think there's like 20 to 30. I don't know the number off the top of my head. So I'm going to go into like some quick facts, like maybe a minute of facts about each order. We're not covering all the orders um, in this episode. It's just like the ones that that jumped out to me or that I thought had some cool facts. Um, And so for that reason... uh, now I will say the transcripts are available in the show notes on the website. If you don't like insects, if they freak you out, I really tried to make sure that some of the facts aren't too like scary, gruesome or whatever. Um, but I also am biased and don't think that insects are scary, gruesome at all. So if you do have an entomophobia or anything like that, do check out those transcripts and the show notes um, on the website, harvestseason.club, so that you can get your news content um, without the insect content. Also, if that is the case for you, do let us know. You can, um, If you're not subscribed, you can email us again at harvestseason.club. And then I will avoid doing this type of episode in the future. I definitely do not want to push people away, but I have a feeling that people who listen to this podcast and enjoy farming games are going to like the bug content. So we're going to find out how that goes. (laughs) So uh, bug content, news, and first, of course, we always talk about what we have been up to. So... I have been doing a lot of different games. Um, my grandma got me back into this phone game um, called Cross Stitch World, and it's literally like a color by number, but with cross stitches, cross stitching. Um, it's really helped me with my ADHD lately, trying to f- stay focused on tasks. Like if I'm in an environment that's really distracting, or if I'm losing focus on a conversation or something that I'm trying to pay attention to, um, that I, that I genuinely care about, I'll just whip out that game and like color. And then I can 100% maintain focus on, um, whatever conversation or show or pot or seminar or whatever it is that I'm listening to. Um, so highly recommend that for fellow ADHDers and fellow crafters. It's really, it's really fun. Um, I will say I haven't mentioned it in a while. Tetris game. I think I think she's dead, y'all. <laughs> I hadn't played it in a while, and I realized that the other day, and so I, I opened her up, and yeah, they do shifting baselines, I am pretty sure, because I checked, and there are no cruises available right now. I have almost 2 million coins, and there are no cruises showing up. What is showing up is I can use like a certain amount of my coins for X, X money off of a cruise or something like that, so... Um, yeah, I just have to take the L there, y'all. Um, uh, but I can still use those points for things, but they're all like places or things that I'm not going to be doing, like going to Vegas and spending money at the Luxor or whatever. I'm like, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna do that. Um, so yeah, rest in peace that game. More pertinent to, to y'all. Um, I've been playing a lot of Disney Dreamlight Valley. I finally hit credits. So I am done on the main story and I am almost done with the realms that are available um, and maximizing the 
villagers that I have right now. So I think the only realm that is currently available that I have not yet unlocked with Dreamlight is Monsters Incorporated. So I just did the Lion King realm and the Toy Story realm. And I have a lot of my people at at max level but for some of them like Olaf I tried to max his level and it was like to do this you need to have Buzz Lightyear in your valley and I was like what the heck so I'm going through and doing that it's just it just scratches a good itch um when I am not fox crafting because I'm still doing that as well my Minecraft fox has a full tail um outlined now uh, the head is complete, and we have begun, my my bestie Devin and I have begun construction of the fox sanctuary. We went and kidnapped some foxes and drug them through the nether and put them on top of, of the fox island um, and have been building a little fox uh, army with them. Um, and so I have those available. Um, and... I'm just like outlining the tail and outlining all of that stuff. And then I just have to build up the sides of it. And then we're continuing to create the sanctuary. Very fun. Um, I've also been playing window garden. Not going to talk about that too much right now because of reasons. Uh, Stay tuned for watch this podcast feed. Um, And then I'm also setting up. This is my last field season of my graduate degrees, I guess, degrees. (laughs) Uh, My graduate education, as it were. Um, tomorrow I'm going into the woods with a uh, forester and we're, he's going to be slingshotting some stuff into the, into the trees, um, for me so that I can put ropes up there and pull my traps up and I'm going to do the final setup the rest of the week and then start next week, um, with my last trap effort. Um, it's really bittersweet. I cannot believe that I am about to be done with the field work that will culminate in my dissertation. Um, I do still have a full year and a half of my dissert- of my um, doctorate left because I do have a full year to finish writing, finish specimens, all of that stuff. And I have so many specimens. Um, so, yeah, we will see how that goes. I'm very excited, though. Um, and, yeah, very sad. Very exciting. And with that, let's get into some news. So our first bit of news here is for Of Life and Land. Of Life and Land is now out in early access. The game is um, twenty is basically thirty dollars USD on Steam, but it has a ten percent discount currently, so you can get it for twenty seven. Also available for purchase right now is a supporter pack for five dollars or four fifty. Again, it's ten percent off right now. Um, and in that supporter pack, you get things like a desktop wallpapers, some digital art posters, paper fox folding instructions, and some 3D models. But paper fox? Excuse me. <laughs> These people. <laughs> These people. Um, they know what I like. So this thing is so heckin' cute. It's basically, it looks like... Um, it's just something that you would print out. Uh, so you'd print out these instructions. You print out the pages that have the bits that you would fold um, on like the colored paper, whatever colored paper. So probably orange and white. But you could also probably honestly do like a purple fox. I think that'd be super cute. And then you fold it and it makes really cute little fox design. And I have personally never wished that I had $30 more in my life <laughs> so that I can get the game and the fox folding. Um but I probably will wait on this game until 1.0. Um, I'm just, I really, I don't, I have limited time for games right now. So I am always going to wait at this point, um, unless asked by, <laughs> by people to cover a game before it is in 1.0. Um, game looks really cute though. It's like Age of Empires, but cozier. And I played the crap out of Age of Empires when I was a kid. So I would love to play this game. Um, and yeah, so we'll see uh, how their how their uh, early access goes, um, and and just keep watching them, and maybe find this paper fox folding instructions. <laughs> the develop uh, developers is it Cor- I think it's Corozen. I believe Kurzovin. Oh, I was so close. Kurzovin developers, if you're listening right now, I will literally pay five dollars just for the paper fox folding instructions. Actually, I might be able to do that. Actually, anyway, like without buying the base game. 
We'll find out. Anyway, so uh, end of the first news item. So here I'm going to talk about an insect order. So I picked for the first um, four insect orders, I picked the big four orders, um, which comprise are the orders of insects that comprise the most biodiversity in um, insecta. And so the one of these is uh, Coleoptera, which is the beetles. Um, it is possibly the most diverse order. So a approximately one of every four species of life this includes plants animals bacteria and fungi one of every four species is a beetle is is wild <laughs> like, and they're so underrepresented if you ever see any games or anything like it's like oh here's all these mammals and then maybe like one beetle and it's like really this flip the script it should be 800 beetles and then one mammal <laughs> like, this is crazy um, so there are currently about 400,000 described species of beetles, but that only refers to beetles that we know and have like written down and, and acknowledged why they're different and why they are unique species. And so, um, some scientists think that there's possibly a million beetles. I've seen up to like 30 million. I don't know. I don't know. That was pretty crazy. I would be really sad if there were 30 million beetles and we've only described 400,000. Oh my gosh. Um, so yeah, probably a million species of beetles, which is wild. I mean, if you think about it, there's only like 4,000 mammals or something. I actually not uh, check on that species of mammal. Uh, 6,400. Yeah, 6,400 species of extant mammals. So... <laughs> It's so little. And that's what most people think of when they think of animals. But beetles are just crazy. Um, one of my favorite quotes about this is um, by British evolutionary biologist and geneticist J.B.S. Haldane. Um, he was talking about beetles once and he said that if there were a god or some type of divine being that has created all of the living organisms on the earth, then that creator must have a, quote, inordinate fondness for beetles. <laughs> So basically, like, they must really like beetles because there's so heckin' many of them. Oh my gosh, there's so many of them. And I'm trying to learn the families right now. Not fun. Not, not fun. Um, <laughs> but I need, I need to, I want, I do want to learn it. It's just a lot of, it's just a lot. It's a lot. Um, what is not a lot is, <laughs> my transitions are going to be on fire today, y'all. What's not a lot Uh because it's awesome and is not a lot of work, question mark, uh, is Rusty's Retirement coming out uh, in its 1.0, its release is the 26th of April. Oh my gosh, the end of this month. Then we get Rusty. Um, and I'm also not sure if it's been confirmed on the pod before, but Rusty is non-binary, um, which makes sense. Like, robots probably don't have um gen i mean i guess they could choose to have gender if they want but um the developer just says in this in this trailer they say they um and that you can help rusty on their quest to rebuild a little farm very cute um and they have more information about how you can like build more housing build more more like buildings for different things you recruit other robots it's this game looks so heckin' cute i am so excited for it to come out yes i will be playing this game it will be on the bottom of my of my screen um i am trying to figure out if i want to put it on my laptop or not um or if i'm going to get too distracted by that we will find out but i will be playing it um one of the things that i love about rusty's retirement whenever i see the little um things is the little bees they have beehives i'm not sure if they're real bees or if they are um like little mechanical robot bees very excited to find that out speaking of bees transition on point the next insect order the next order that is within the big four um are hymenoptera so these are uh this order includes saw flies ants wasps and bees um and just because i'm never sure if people know this bees are just vegetarian wasps about 100 million years ago when flowers started evolving and diversifying and this great radiation event um in flowers occurred some of the wasps were like bet 
like I see this, I see this, I see these resources and I want them. And they started eating the plant pollen, plant pollen, and they became the first bees. And since then, there's been this evolutionary arms race between bees and flowers um, as they continue to evolve and specialize with each other. So like flowers developed nectar to draw bees in um, closer so that bees would definitely collect pollen. Bees then developed branched hairs, which allowed them to become more efficient at collecting pollen. And they just kept going back and forth. And there's all kinds of really wacky evolutionary stories there. Um about the different evolutionary things that bees or flowers have have done for each other um but i think my favorite is orchids uh and orchid bees there are orchids that literally look like (laughs) female bees and they and they put out volatiles and pheromones and scents um that smells like female bees of of this very specific um group the i think it's the euglossine bees um the orchid bees that's what they're called and they mimic female bees. So the males come in, they think they see a female, they jump on it and they end up getting stuck and have to, like when they pull themselves out, they take a, a pollen, a pollinia, which is like a little bundle of pollen. And then when they get tricked by another flower, they end up transferring the pollen from one flower to another. Wild. Super wild. Very cool. Uh, insects, they've, they just have because they're so short-lived they they don't have these super long lifespans like we do evolution happens so fast with them so you have this huge radiation of different lifestyles um different life histories is what i meant to say look different life histories different adaptations crazy so cool um another thing that's really cool (laughs) is botany manor um i am super excited for this game i have been since we first talked about it on the pod and it is now going to be releasing uh by the time you are listening to this podcast it is already out she's out on steam for pc um again this is a game where you're a botanist in 1890 and you are trying to it seems like you're trying to revive flora that have become uh missing or are misunderstood or just not poorly not not well understood um i'm here for it so you're basically learning about these different flowers evolving these or not i guess you're evolving the different flowers and kind of doing a, an artificial selection on the flowers um this game is published by whitethorn games which is the same publisher as friend of the pod apico um love that and yeah so i mean in this trailer that they showed where they talked about their release date they showed the manor they showed mysteries of the manor uh morse code you use morse code at some point like legitimately you learn morse code and use morse code to solve some of the puzzles i mean teaching me to do something like (laughs) that is useful in the real world say less it also looks like there might be cooking there's a part where you're tending to a plant in what's clearly a kitchen environment um, you tend to plants in general, so there's like a compost bin, there's seeds, you water things, you plant things in different, different places. Um, one thing that caught my eye in this trailer was a moth calendar. So it's it looks like it's this like spinning wheel calendar um, that tells you what season different moths come out. So like you 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 are like oh May, and it's like oh in May these are the moths that you'll see, which I would love that. <laughs> I mean, I use um, iNaturalist, which is a an application to basically try and figure out what diversity is popping up around me. But like a cute little kind, a cute little thing that you can rotate, and it tells you you're just like, oh, what what kind of stuff is going to be here in September? I think that's so cute. Um, so yeah, check out Botany Botany Manor if you haven't already. Um, again, Steam for PC. There, because I'm recording pre-release, uh, I don't know the amount. I'm not sure of the price of this game, uh, but I would drop down probably like 20 bucks on this game if I had the time to play it. <laughs> and if it was on Mac, because Steam, again, I, I usually don't use my desktop for anything anymore, unfortunately. Um, speaking of cool moths, the next insect order in our um big four are is lepidoptera which i've already talked about before um on a previous pod so these are the moths and the butterflies 
Um, and although many people know a lot about like the big showy butterflies and moths, like the monarchs, the swallowtails, atlas moths, luna moths, you see the big caterpillars like the um, hickory horned devil or the tobacco hornworm, like these caterpillars that just have these crazy adornments on them. Um, some of my favorites are in the family Lycenidae or Lycanidae, um, depends on how, like Canidae, depends on how you want to pronounce the C in that, in that word. And these are the blue butterflies. So these are really actually fairly small. Um, in my area, the Eastern tailed blue is probably the most common and it's when it folds its little wings up, it's probably no bigger than like a quarter, might be a little bit bigger than a quarter. Um, I don't know the size of a Euro. I don't really know. I'm trying to think of like other audiences who and and what might explain to them. Maybe like a is way smaller than like a bottle cap. And it's probably the size of a bottle cap. Let's just say it's a bottle cap. Um, so these caterpillars uh, the of the family Lycenidae have a partnership with ants. They're actually called Myrmecophilus. So Myrmeco means ant. Phyle means love. So they're literally ant loving butterflies. So these caterpillars literally pay the ants. Um, They excrete secretions on their backs that provide a sugar-rich nectar source for the ants. So they'll come, they'll come up to some ants in the wild, um, you know, wherever their, their mom, their um, mother like laid their egg, they'll find some ants and they'll just start releasing this nectar, sugar-rich nectar source. And ants are like, this is awesome. This thing just poops out (laughs) like, deliciousness and then they carry the caterpillar back to their colony and they'll actually bring it food um and it ha- they the ants house this caterpillar and protect it while it grows bigger and bigger and bigger and i think sometimes the caterpillar also like just eats their food <laughs> um and yeah so it basically gets this defense and this protection from these ant from this ant colony and then they'll either, depending on the species, I think they either pupate within the, the ant colony and then they'll emerge as an adult butterfly, you know, in the, in the, in the spring or whatever. Um, or they might come out of the ant colony, like crawl out of the ant colony, find a place to pupate and then pupate and then do the same thing. Super crazy though, that they just, cause we've, you've heard of ants farming, uh, fungus before, but what about ma, uh, butterfly larvae farming ants basically? <laughs> Or manipulating ants. Super wild. Uh, next bit of news is Lens Island. Um, so the community update is out now. This adds Korean, Russian, French, Portuguese, and an update to the, update to the Thai translations. So I guess the original Thai translations might have been subpar um, or just had, hadn't been finalized yet. Um, so they are, they've taken that into consideration and have updated that. Love that. Um, they've also added a lot of things to the game. There's some small changes, um, some bug fixes, some things, some balancing issues. It seemed like there were some things that might have been too difficult or too easy or what have you. Um, so they've changed all of that. And every time we talk about this game, I want to jump back into it immediately. Like every time I see the word Lens Island, words Lens Island, I'm like, man, I would love to jump back into that game like at this very moment because I really did enjoy it. I put many hours like probably like 20 or 30 hours into this game um just like jumping into the mines trying to explore the dungeon trying to i mean it was it was a pretty big slog in the beginning to level to like level up your weaponry and and get the things that you needed i would go for like a 10 or 15 minute jaunt around the island just to get like all the food that i could get before i went in the dungeon and then i would still probably end up running out of food and dying Um, It's way easier now, but I just really want to jump back into it. But I really also want to wait until 1.0 to get the full effect of having not played this game since its first release. Um, So I will be on the lookout for that 100%. Um, Lens Island, don't you worry. No cool transition here. Just the final of the big four. We're back to bugs. Uh, The final of the big four is Diptera. These are the flies. Um, Diptera literally means two wings, and that's because flies only have two wings. Um, most everything else has either four wings or beetles have um, hind wings that are super soft and then four wings that have been um, hardened into elytra. Um, but Diptera just straight up have two wings. They have uh, 
on the back instead of having a second pair of uh, a pair of hind wings they have what are called haltiers and there are these organs that kind of help them um, balance in the air and orient there are all kinds of really cool flies including bee flies which is the family bombolidae they just look like fluffy little clouds um i mean if you're if you're a pokemon fan and you think of uh cutie fly it just looks like that pretty much um uh, hoverflies and flower hoverflies or flower flies those are two names for the exact same thing they're flies in the family surfity um these flies are actually also really efficient pollinators they tend to be fairly hairy um, and they can look like bees as well uh, bees or wasps and they do this to fake out predators so they look they look fuzzy they have the coloration of bees or wasps and then predators see them and they're like mm, i've eaten a bee before it didn't go well for me so i'm going to leave this thing alone super cool cool form of mimicry but i think i'm going to go with uh, for some of my favorite dipterans is going to be dance flies um or flies in the family empidity so the males actually find um what they call what is called a nuptial gift they find something that they want to give to the female it could be some food could just be something cool that he found or whatever um and then he wraps it in a little package of silk and then he flies um carrying this little package of like a silk on a string and he presents it to a female and then if she likes it she'll take it she'll open it she'll look at it and if she likes it cool you you've you've successfully won her hand in marriage and if she doesn't then she just tosses it and you have to go, the male has to go find another gift wrap it again in silk um and try again next time super cool uh i have never seen these in the wild and i'm so sad like of this this thing but i did have a friend once send me this he's a, uh, a friend who's an ornithologist and he was like do you know what the heck is going on here and he sent me a picture of a fly with a like in the air flying with this little thing under it and i was like oh my gosh that's a dance fly and i lost my mind and he was like you are exactly right that's that was really cool um so yeah catch me in gosh where is he kentucky in probably like august trying to find him pittance <laughs> okay next bit of news here is steam world build um now has a dlc called mechanized out um you can go get this get this dlc now um, this DLC basically adds a bunch of stuff, uh, including an NPC named Mech that can help you solve puzzles to help get off the get you off the planet. Um, and it also introduces a new big bad called the Abomination that tries to thwart you and goes through your area and um, destroys things that you're doing or, or impedes your your attempt to leave the planet. Um, it looks like a really cool puzzle game. I've actually never looked at Steamworld build before. Um, it's giving, oh gosh, not Forester or Forager or, oh my gosh, I can't believe I'm not thinking of this game right now. Another game where you're doing computery things. It's probably, it's literally on my desktop, isn't it? Factorio, because <laughs> I've played this with my partner. It's giving Factorio vibes, but in more of a puzzly 3D format. Very cool. Um, and for a limited time, you can save money when bundling the DLC with the main game on Steam. So if you've been wanting to try out Steam World and you're like, not really sure, then uh, now's a great time to jump back in because you can save money um, on not only the main game, but also the DLC. Um, the next group, so we've already covered the big four. So the big four being Beatles, um, Coleoptera, Hymenoptera, Diptera, and Lepidoptera. Um so those are the, the big four that I just wanted to get out of the way um, just because they're the most diverse. But the next, so the other ones that I'm going to talk about are the ones that I think are just really cool <laughs> and show. Uh, I mean, I think they're all really cool, honestly. But these I thought were accessible um, and just interesting to people. So uh, the first order is Odonata, which is the damselflies and the dragonflies. So these are some of the best flyers in the animal kingdom. They have really insane musculature in their thorax, and they actually can fly in any direction because of this. Um, each of their wings has its own musculature and can move independently of the others. So this allows them to move in any direction. They can move forward, backward, up, down, side, like side to side. They can do whatever they want. Whereas most insects, they're restricted to flying forward. Um, and in order to fly in a different direction, they have to like 
turn their body. So they like use their wings to like turn in a different direction, but they can't just go backwards. They can't fly backwards um, or go up or down or whatever. This makes them really successful predators in the animal kingdom. Um, Most predators have a really low success rate. So think of like the lion on the savanna. Most of the time, not going to be successful. Most of the time, not, not getting a wildebeest or whatever it's trying to, um, whatever she's trying to catch. Uh, but dragonflies, I think it's like 75% success bonkers. They also will take, some of them will take like bees, um, other flies. I mean, I think that they're not really that picky. Some will take other dragonflies. Crazy. Uh, they also, this is (laughs) nothing I've said is a lie so far. Uh, and I don't plan on lying. This is this this seems made up. Uh, they make a really cute heart shape when they mate. So when they mate, they connect their heads, their like the end of their abdomen to the he- top of the head of the other one, and they end up making a really cute heart shape. I highly recommend people look up dragonfly mating. Um, it it's not graphic or anything. It just looks goofy. Speaking of goofy, look at me with these transitions. Disney Dreamlight Valley. (laughs) Uh, The Act 2 of the paid DLC has been announced to be coming out soon. So the paid DLC is a rift in time. And this DLC includes three acts. Um, So some people on this tweet, when they they mentioned in the Twitter that, um, you know, the next expand, uh, the next part of the act, act, um, of the next act of this expansion uh dlc is going to be coming out um some people were like oh wait do i have to pay more for this like i've already paid for a rift in time and they're like no no like this is part of the paid dlc so if you've already paid for a rift in time which i believe is only like 25 dollars or 20 dollars um you're, you don't have to pay again you're gonna get all three of these acts so Act 1 was Eternity Isle. This is available now. You can do this now um, if you have paid for it. I will say I have uh, the game on Xbox Live, like um, Game Pass. So I didn't pay for the game. I'm playing it free to play through Game Pass. Um, and if you want to do Rift of Ta- Rift in Time, you have to pay on top of that. Um, and so I haven't done this. But... Um, I'm also like nowhere near done <laughs> with <laughs> with the content that is free. So um not gonna be worried about it. So yeah, Act One adds Eternity Isle, um, adds Rapunzel, Gaston, and Eve um as the player goes to what is called Eternity Isle. Um it which seems like this place where you can mess with time, um, you can get a tool. It's like it looks like it's Jafar's staff and it can allow you to turn back time to like see different artifacts. Um, interesting, I guess. <laughs> I'm not I don't really I, I I really need to rewatch the Aladdin movies. I don't think he can mess with time. Maybe he can in like one of the second or third ones. I don't remember. Um, so, yeah, that is already out now. Um, so coming, quote unquote, spring, which spring's almost done y'all <laughs> like, isn't spring like at the end of may mid-may i don't know when you would end spring but uh the second act is called the spark of imagination and in the spark of imagination you will quote explore ancient's landing to uncover more of its secrets and befriend a very lucky villager so there are some spec there's some speculation about who this villager could be um, I, I'm trying to think of like what Disney character could be called lucky. Um, but what I think this is, is probably Atlantis. <laughs> um, the symbol on this looks a lot like the cave that is on Dazzle Beach, was it, which is the current Disney Dreamlight Valley, um, one of the places in the current game. And it gives big Atlantis energy. When you are in that cave, there are Atlantean symbols and people have already like decoded them because there's an Atlantean alphabet. Um, And just the thought of like going back in time and thinking about like Atlantis as this land lost to time or whatever, I'm thinking, I'm thinking it's Milo Thatch, y'all. But it could also be the I don't remember her name, but the princess from Atlantis, who's a 
awesome human. Like, is she Atlantean? <laughs> um, could be her too. Uh, who knows? But um, I think that's who it is. Someone else, like I saw someone else say something. It could be like Daff, not Daffy Duck, uh, Donald Duck's brother, cousin, something. I was like, I don't, that sounds way, way out of left field. I don't think, I don't think that's true. Um, so yeah, the spark of imagination is the second act in, um, or ripped in time. The third act is, which is coming out quote unquote summer 2024 is, uh, treasures of time. Um, so this is the final act of a rift in time. And in this you will foil Jafar's schemes. Um, whatever that means. Uh, so we'll see how I feel about this. I don't know about y'all. If, you, if you've been playing D, uh, DDV, as I call it, um, let me know. Some of these villains, I wish I could just, I mean, honestly, some of the right, some of the random, like old timers too. Like sometimes I'm just like, can I just not see Mickey anymore? I'm sick of it. I'm not a big Mickey Mouse fan. I'm not a big Minnie Mouse fan. I'm not a big Donald Duck fan. I like just get these kids out of here. I don't, I don't care. And I feel that way about some of the villains as well. Like one of the villains is Mother Gothel. Every time she walks up, she like is just so gaslighty. And mm, the way she talks to you is just so disrespectful. And so I'm not, at least like Ursula, when you talk to her, she seems to like meet, respect you and like meet you at your level. And then Scar, I mean, he's delusional. He just thinks that he should be the king. So I get it. But Jafar has always given me the ick um in Aladdin like the way that he treats Jasmine and like the way that he feels like he needs to like own her or whatever is just very ick so I don't know (laughs) I don't know how I feel about this (laughs) about I don't know how I'm gonna feel about Jafar or if they can kind of like update him to be not as ick as he was that'd be lovely um but I also have not paid for this DLC yet. I, pro- I honestly probably will once I complete all of the current free play- free to play content because this game has given me a lot. Um, and if you haven't played it and you have Game Pass, I highly recommend it. If you have expendable income and nothing to do with your life for the next forever, um, no, you could probably play this game in like a, a month. Like you probably get through everything. Um, I, I do recommend it. I'm getting a lot of enjoyment out of it. Um, I just don't like the ick of some of the villains. And speaking of ick, uh, the next uh, group of insects is uh, the Order Phasmida. And this is the stick, stick, and leaf insects. Um, I, as I was looking over like the orders of insects and I saw Phasmida, my, I just like my heart grew three sizes. You will never know greater joy than I did when I was working in the field in 2019 here in Pennsylvania. And I found a stick insect in the wild, like in the woods. Cause sometimes you'll find them on like a building, like they'll, cause they do show up in, in, uh, rural areas every now and then. And it's like, okay, like that, it's going to stick out. Ah, uh, stick, stick, because it's a stick insect. Like, it, 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 you see it when it's against a building. Super obvious. But when you find one in the wild, like, I was just, like, doing a survey. I was walking a transect, which is just a, a, literally a line. I was walking a line for 30 minutes to, to look at the bees that were there. And I just was like, that is a stick insect on that bush. And I had to pause my survey because I played with that thing for, like, an hour. <laughs> I just I put it on my face. I have pictures. Of, I put so many insects on my face and take pictures. Y'all is crazy. Uh, took a picture of it. Um, just lost my mind and just had so much joy in watching this thing. And just I set it down. I watched it for like ten minutes as it walked around. So cool. They're super hard to find because of their amazing camouflage abilities. So their whole evolutionary strategy for all stick and leaf insects, like this whole order, is just fake out the predators. Don't. Don't look like a, a something to eat. Look like a stick. Be a stick. Um, and there are, other than that, I mean, they're just pretty, they can be pretty breakable. Though there can be some in um, 
tropical areas that have will, will have some pretty gnarly cuticular defenses. Like they'll have some spikes or thorny protrusions so, and they're pretty um, sclerotized. So when you touch them, like they are very hard, they're not squishy um, and they hurt. And so I've never really seen these before. We, we have had some in the insect zoo, some um, leaf insects that had some of that. But um, again, evolution, what are you doing? Uh, Moonstone Island. Um, they did an April Fool's haha on everyone <laughs> um, on Twitter. And they basically showed everything evolving into a version of Fishbow. So Fishbow, I haven't played Moonstone Island. This is wild to me. I had, I had to go down the rabbit hole a little bit to know what the heck I was talking about here. But basically Fishbow is like one of the spirits, I believe. And it it's literally a fishbowl that has legs. <laughs> that's it it's just a fish bow fish bow <laughs> so they tweeted a graphic kind of like a meme um from pokemon and it showed like a fish bow becoming a fish bow or like something becoming a fi- oh, fish bow and it said what all your little guys is evolving <laughs> so it's basically like all your guys they're just little guys. They're all evolving right now. And it alludes to the fact that all of your spirits can become fish bowed as a verb, fish bowed. Um, so it's like if you have another spirit, it would just become the spirit instead of the fish in the bowl, it's that spirit in the bowl. And this might actually come to the game. Um, in the tweet, they said that if there's, if they get 1000 likes on the tweet, they'll do it, but they're clearly excited to do it with or without the likes. They already have some pictures of, um, different sprites that they've put or spirits that they've put in the fishbowl. Very cute. Um, let us and the Moonstone Island devs know what spirit you want fishbowed. Maybe they'll make it happen. Okay, just a couple more things here, but next up is another order of insects. And here we have Macoptera, um, the scorpion flies. And I specifically am going to be talking about the family of Panorpity. Uh, hilarious name, Panor. I love saying it. Um, these guys look wild. <laughs> so these, even though they're called scorpion flies, they aren't actually flies, just like butterflies aren't flies. They're, they're something completely different. So scorpion flies do look like flies, but they have four wings. They're not, they didn't evolve. They're not a part of that evolutionary chain. And the males literally have scorpion-like tails. Like their reproductive organ looks like a scorpion tail. Doesn't sting you, can't hurt you, just looks like a scorpion. (laughs) They also have this really like goober looking snoot. Very funny. Um, they're super war- uh, super weird, and they're known mostly among entomologists for the fact that they look weird. But they are also thought to have helped in early pollination before the evolution of bees. And they are used for forensic entomology currently. So for, I just thought this would be a cool moment to like shout out what, what forensic entomology is. Super cool. It's using insects to solve crimes. So often it's used to try and time when uh, like time of death like when someone died based on what insects have come to the body at that time so scorpion fly larvae can be some of the very first to find a cadaver so if they're there and if they're present and how uh, how much they've um developed can tell you how long the body has been in that area and how long it's been since since deceasement um (laughs) new word uh Forensic entomology is super cool. Um, There's actually a forensic entomologist that I met um, who's out in New Jersey, Jersey, and she kind of, she can tell you like vague stories, but she can't tell you some stories because they're still, like the trials are still going on. Um, She's been in courtrooms. She's been, like, this is a legitimate thing that people do sometimes, like as a career. So cool. Not for me, but cool. Um, other insects that can be used in forensic entomology include flesh flies, uh, of the family Sarcophagidae, blow flies, f- f- family Californidae, rove beetles, which is the family Staphylinidae, and carrion beetles, which is the family Sylphidae. Super, super cool. Um, next on news is critter crops. So critter crops has been delayed to quote unquote later this year. Um, so this was meant to release on the 15th of April, 
Um, and I just think it's funny. I bet that they probably just heard Al say that this looks like a good game to play in October (laughs) during the last Coral Island episode. And they were like that. Let's do it. (laughs) Let's delay it. Um, that's not true, (laughs) but I do like the idea of that. Uh, they delayed because testing is taking longer than they expected. And in their, um, launch delay note in steam news, they said that they're literally playing the game over and over again to test it um, and make sure that everything works. So I'm not super surprised that it's taking longer than they expected. Um, I'm assuming people probably get fatigue if you try and play a game over and over and over again. Um, Even if, especially if you're the one that developed it, honestly, because you know everything. Um, But yeah, it's not not surprising. Take your time. Um, Totally fine with the delay. I, all of the comments that I saw were also very positive about the delay. Like, you do you. How about it? Um, okay, this is this is it, y'all. This is the final order. But it's also kind of a bonus because there are four sub-orders <laughs> in it uh, that are very <laughs> important. So this order is Hemiptera. And this has four sub-orders in it. Um, and I'm going to go through these. And I... I'm never sure if I'm pronouncing this first one correctly. I think it's Coleorinca. Could also be Celiorinca. They don't occur in the United States, so I don't know. But these are called the moss bugs. Um, another one is Eucanorinca. So this includes cicadas and leafhoppers. Another suborder is Sternorinca, which is aphids, whiteflies, and scale insects and, and others. Um, but the one that I really wanted to talk about is Heteroptera. So this is the suborder within Hemiptera. It's called Heteroptera. And these are the true bugs. So while we call things bugs all the time, like, and people will call something a bug, even if it's not an insect, like they'll call like a spider, a bug or whatever. Um, while we do call all kinds of things bugs all the time, this is the group this is the suborder that these are the ones that are actually bugs <laughs> these are called the true bugs crazy um so the true bugs include families uh things like uh, stink bugs which is pentatomidae assassin bugs regiviidae kissing bugs i actually don't remember that uh bed bugs submissity um but my favorite family is tingity uh or the lace bugs uh, these things literally look like if you knitted something and it grew legs and walked away, <laughs> like you, like you made something out of lace, a very, very small, small lacy thing. And it grew legs and walked away. <laughs> That's what these things look like. And I never, I had never seen one before. And then I just started going through my samples from last year and I'm finding a good number of them actually, like, like at least like 10. And I, every single time I'm like, I have this like childlike giddy giggle because i'm just like oh they're so cute and they just look like little little delicate creations they look like little art artwork um i mean they're not the only things that look like artwork there's a lot of uh, other things that are brightly colored metallic colored um what have you but the lace bugs the tingids they're just they're so cute Okay, final bit of news, y'all. You're almost done with me. Hang in there, poglings. Um, okay, so the news is about poglings, but uh, I just had to go on a tangent here for a second about pog uh, or pogs. So th- every time I see this game name, I think that it's about pogs, which are the collectible tabs tags that we like collected in the 90s and played with um which if you are a 2000s baby look these things up because (laughs) it just (laughs) we collected i mean i guess people do things like this now they collect pieces of cardboard and trade them and stuff but this is basically what we did it's this little circle that you collected and you would find cool ones and 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 trade them with your friends or do like a different game super crazy um and I was trying to like look those up and be like, what ever happened to those? And I went down a Wikipedia rabbit hole and I'm just going to take you guys with me for, for here, a minute here about Pog. So this is not about this game at all. Um, I'll get to that in a second. This is about 1990s um, in my childhood. Uh, so this is for, straight from Wikipedia. Quote, 
Milk Caps is a children's game played with fat, flat, circular cardboard milk caps. Players make a stack of these caps and take turns to drop a heavier slammer object onto it, causing the caps to be disrupted. Each player keeps any face-up caps and is to restack the face-down caps, repeating the process until none land face-down, at which point the player who collected the most caps wins the game. I lost the game. The game is also known as Pogs, under which name it was sold commercially in the 1990s. So I think, like, the circular milkboard caps that they... So this is me going off um, of the quote. Uh, the circular milkboard caps, this was just, like, you buy a thing of milk and you take that like tab that's on the inside of it and you play with play it with that. So that was just like that. Um, but these pogs that were sold and commercialized, they had so many different pieces of art on them. So some of them were um, like, I'm, I'm just like at a loss to even begin to say what's on these. There's like art, like someone drew like a flower on it. There's some that are, are like uh tasmanian devil like so there's some that were like looney tunes there's some that you could have found them in any like anything that said that it was okay for pog to put its likeness on them there were just so many different kinds um and they they were pretty good quality of cardboard as well um and i never played because with this because uh the like milk caps game itself um, because I didn't want to, if I collected it and I wanted it, I didn't want to get it, get rid of it. And I don't know where my hogs are and I'm upset. Um, the end of the Wikipedia blurb here is that the name originates from pog, which is a brand of juice made, um, from passion fruit, orange and guava and the use of the juices caps to play the game preceded the game's commercialization, which is wild to me because I just went to Hawaii and pog is is a hawaiian beverage and i lost my mind because it's delicious and when i got it in hawaii it is so smooth and i got it everywhere like every single place i went to i was like do you have pog and they said yes and i was like that is what i would like to drink please um and i found it on the west coast but you cannot find it on the east coast of the united states and your girl's about to drop like 50 bucks i can't do that but if i could (laughs) i would drop 50 bucks to get some of this stuff delivered to me wild pogs pog the juice pog lings the game here we are uh they just announced on kickstarter that the development team will be changing so the person who de- who is the creator of pog lings um his name is chad he is just not or he he is still going to be staying on but another team that had agreed to help him develop pog lings is not going to be able to continue on for unknown reasons. Um, and he, the, in the post, it's very, very clear that it's, it's, you know, not, not something to have drama over. Like this happens. The game industry is really difficult right now. Developing is really difficult. Some people have been losing their jobs. Like it's kind of hard to make money in this. So he's super understanding and he's looking for, um, other development teams to help him finish this project product project. Yeah. Both words work. Um, so yeah, uh, the reasoning is pretty generic there. Uh, the development team will be changing, and this was obviously going to delay the game. Um, and he just, you know, says this and says, you know, I'm sorry for the lack of um, whatever. Uh, yeah, and and that it, the game was going to be delayed. The response is pretty positive. Um, you know, a lot of people saying, you know, take your time. We understand gaming is really the game development industry is really hard right now thank you for your transparency um and yeah all of all of those things echoed back um i think that it's good that they're being transparent and open about it and um i hope they find a a new development team to partner with them and wish them the best so that we can see this game and if they chad chad this is just just for you if you put passion for orange and guava juice in this game and you at me or reach out to me in some way and you tell me that you did this i will buy this game 100 percent, 100 percent. i will well that is all of the news and i have no more orders for you there i there are a lot more orders y'all so let me know if this was fun let me know if you want me to dive into a specific insect topic i can make this a greenhouse thing i can i can podcast about greenhouse the insects forever Um, so this is the end. So I'm going to check back in is solo podcasting hard. It's not easy. (laughs) 
<laughs> I will say there have been some tangents I've gone on where I'm like, is this interest? Am I? Am I interesting? Is this boring people right now? <laughs> There's not that person to like check you and be like, stop talking about this. Um, it is a little difficult. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. Uh, not undoable though. This was this was pretty pretty manageable, um, especially when I sprinkled in talking about insects in the middle of it. So, um, so yeah, let us know, listeners. Did this work? Did this not? Um, I'm not gonna be upset if it didn't work. This is not something that I've been like really wanting to do or anything. This is just it just had it just happened, and that's okay. Um, but so yeah, if you're like no, never never let Cody on, solo on a mic again. This was awful. Bet. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you for the feedback. <laughs> Noted. <laughs> um, you can tell me that, uh, or you could tell me other cool things that are positive <laughs> on Instagram at hiking beagle, um, beagle, B E E G O L. Um, that is my Twitter handle or sorry, Instagram handle. I also have a Twitter. It's, uh, just my name at Cody Mathis. I am not on Twitter much anymore. Y'all it's mostly Instagram for me. Um, so find me there. Uh, if you want me to be fired from the podcast, you can let Al know at the Scott bot on mastodon.scott and on Twitter. Um, I think he's mostly using mastodon.scott. Uh, you can also follow the podcast on Tumblr and Twitter at THS pod. Um, you can also provide that feedback, uh, at harvestseason.club, um, where you can get feedbacks. So you can get links to the show notes, uh, other episodes, uh, links to the Patreon, uh, patreon.com slash THS pod. And that allows you in, uh, access to the greenhouse. Um, there might be a future greenhouse episode with other co-hosts, not promising things, but this is possibly a promise. <laughs> Al's not here to be like, Cody, stop promising things. Uh, maybe we'll talk about more insects and we'll talk about our favorite insects. Uh, maybe some other people and I will get together. Um, maybe I'll talk about the other, uh, order, insect orders that I thought might be too graphic for the main pod. And I realized I should probably check before I talk about them. What could be too graphic for the podcast? What? What insect order is so weird and goober that I didn't, I didn't know if I could talk about it or not. What could that possibly be? You should probably subscribe on patreon.com slash THS pod and keep your eye on the greenhouse feed to find out. Um, so yeah, that is this uh, news slash insect episode. Uh, I hope y'all enjoyed. Al, I hope you enjoyed editing it. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> I am the way I am. And this has been a, a, an hour long escapade into the brain of, of me. Um, and you will catch me later, catch me on a different pod with another human, hopefully tempering, tempering my um, distracted insanity. But until that time, Have a good harvest. The Harvest Season is created by Al McKinley with support from our patrons, including our pro farmers, Kevin, Stuart, and Elisa. Our art is done by Micah the Brave, and our music is done by Nick Burgess. Feel free to visit our website, harvestseason.club, for show notes and links to things we discussed in this episode. Hello, Al. I am recording. Okay, so I'm recording. Um, this is just for you. I'm recording. Uh, I'm not going to do a Zoom recording because that doesn't make sense. Um, so I'm just going to skip all of that. This is my local recording. I have already checked that it is using my microphone and not my webcam. I will not 3, 2, 1 clap. You cannot make me. Um, yeah, so I'm just going to jump right in. Um, I made notes and stuff in the show notes. I'm sure you'll see them when you awaken. Um, and with that, I'll just get started.